Well, hello, everybody. Welcome into this Adobe Photoshop tutorial brought to you, as always, by tutvid.com. This is take number two, because I realized I forgot to turn the recorder on for take number one. So here it goes again. Maybe it'll be better the second time around. Doesn't feel like it right now, but maybe it will. Anyway, today in this video, we're going to talk about something that's going to be so useful for you if you do landscape photography or really any type of photography. I could see this being useful in product photography, uh, architectural stuff, really uh, most kinds of photography. It is unlocking and unleashing the power of the luminosity mask, what it is, how you can use it. Uh, and just why you're going to be really excited about it by the end of this tutorial. So enough talking about it. Let's jump into Photoshop and start doing something about it because I think you're going to like it. All right, here we are in Photoshop. I feel like I've done this before. Uh, here is uh, an image that we sort of just created. This is the uh, this is the raw or this is the raw version of it. I'm sorry, and uh, this was just a photo right out of camera from a couple months ago when I was out in San Francisco. Of course, the Golden Gate Bridge, and not necessarily golden hour, but the sun was sort of beginning to set. Uh, maybe we we're 45 minutes off of golden hour. Definitely not middle of the afternoon. Uh, the west is here to the left of the image. The sun is setting over the ocean, and you can see it sort of lighting up the side of the bridge and some of the buildings and things like that, but it wasn't quite um, where I would have wanted it to be optimally. But by using luminosity masks, I was able to sort of bring the whole scene together, change the uh, dynamic range and just the, the richness and depth of the image, and then begin the process of color grading and all of that. So what are luminosity masks? Why are they so important and so awesome? Well, basically, if you take a look at these masks, these are masks that are luminosity masks. So what I've done is off of the initial image, I can see the sky is a little too bright and the foreground is way too dark. So what do I do? Well, I bring up the foreground. Now you may say, oh, no problem. I create a mask, throw some curves in there, boost up the light, I'm done. Well, not so fast. Number one, by painting in, it takes a little bit of time. And even if you just do a big soft edge brush, it's never going to be nearly as exact. And it doesn't follow all the different uh, levels of lightness and tone that you have in that part of your image. And it doesn't perfectly instantaneously uh, create a mask that looks like this. You can see how complex this is, where literally the light bicycle helmet isn't getting the same level of treatment as the dark stuff right around that bicycle helmet, right? And the same here for darkening of the sky. I just said, look, make most of the foreground dark. Look at the perfect selection here around the trees. And the bulk of the brightness is in the sky. And of course, we know in a mask, bright means that effect, that layer, that color, that whatever is going to shine through the strongest in those lighter parts of the mask. So that's how that works. Now, you may be thinking, oh, this is, you know, this is easy. Go select color range. No big deal. I can select my highlights, my midtones, my shadows. Done deal, right? I can go highlights and just say, look, give me more of the highlights. And voila, I've got highlights. Look at that. I even got little speckles on the side of the tree. I could hit OK and I've got this nice selection. Well, eh, sort of. But the the color range I've noticed just does it just flat out does not do nearly as good a job as the channel based luminosity uh, mask that we're going to be creating. And the beautiful thing about it is if you create a, a, an action or use the action, I've got a free action that you can download in the description to this video. No strings attached. You don't need to sign up to my newsletter. None of that nonsense. Um, you could subscribe to my channel, though, I guess that'd be cool. Uh, but uh, you can if you have an action, it's as easy as going window actions and executing luminosity masks action. And you have all the masks that quickly, faster than color range, faster than painting in a selection, faster than painting in a mask. It's super quick. I'm still going to show you how to set it up for the first time in case that's your thing. And it does kind of help you understand how things work. Uh, but um, you're going to want to download the action or create your own action and just roll with that and have an absolute blast. So with all that talking out of the way, I'm going to open up a camera raw image here in camera raw. This is right out of the camera. Nothing's been applied to it. The only thing I would recommend you change is down here in the workflow options. Just choose to open your image as a smart object. Camera raw images, open them as smart objects. I am also working with 16 bits per channel and then hit open object in Photoshop uh, and let's get this thing moving. All right, we got the image. I'm going to rename my layer right off the bat because the file name is just tripping me out a little bit. I'm going to go with Golden Gate and uh, we can use this image. We could use any other image to create a series of luminosity masks. Here's how it happens. 
We bring out our channels panel, which by the way, window, channels, if you don't have it open, it's an underrated panel. It's a lot of fun, and it'll make you feel like you know a little bit more than your friends about Photoshop uh, if you start playing around in here. So what we can do to get the first luminosity selection is Command or Control click the RGB composite layer thumbnail. That's a mouthful. We Command or Control click that to load it as a selection, and we've just loaded the highlights as a selection. So then I come down here and choose New Channel and hit Command or Control I, and there we go, our first luminosity mask, targeting primarily the highlights and covering up primarily the shadows. That's not all. We want to constrict this and say, you know what? Hone in even more tightly on those highlights. Well, we can do that by intersecting the selection of that original uh, light selection. That Just forget I even said all this. Here's all you need to do. Hold down Command-Shift-Option. That's Control-Shift-Alt on the PC and click the thumbnail for the RGB channel once more. It's going to cut down the selection and we create a new channel again and hit Command or Control-I. And then we do that process again Create a new channel, Commander Control I, and we'll probably do it like a fourth time. You can do it five times. You can do it as many times as your image will allow you to do it, really. And you can see each time we go from here, the sky's really bright. Here it's still really bright, but the, the foreground's even darker. Here the sky's gotten dark, and the foreground's like a, a no man's land. And here it's even darker. And uh, maybe maybe I'll do it one more time. Let's see if we can do it once more and just really constrict this. All right, there we go. So we have, now I'm going to hit Commander Control D. But now we have five variations of selecting the highlights. Now, uh, what's the big deal? What would anybody ever use a mask like this for? Well, check this out, right? We can turn everything back. Well, actually, first, let's zoom in. What do we see? We see the highlights, or the headlights, I should say, of every car driving across the Golden Gate Bridge at that particular moment in time. We got them all, and they're all selected. So if the client, for whatever reason, said, look, we want to change the color of the high of the, the headlights of every vehicle coming across the bridge to blue or something, I could say, hey, heh, no problem. I come down here, I command or control click on alpha five, loads that as a selection. See, so we all let's select these stuff. And we go like hue saturation, voila. Now I know what you're thinking. Eh, look at the mask. It's it's got all the stuff in the sky selected and it's a mess. Okay, you're right. Here's how easy it is to get rid of that. You take your lasso tool, drag a selection around these cars, and then go select, inverse selection, and then fill it with black. Edit fill. Where's black? There it is. And we hit OK. And then Commander Control D to deselect. And now look at that. A perfect mask that quickly just around the car headlights. If we alter option, click the mask, go back to our hue saturation layer instead, and we say something like colorize, darken the brightness, boost up the uh, saturation there, and then we make them all blue, right? Or whatever. I'm not saying it's going to look perfect. I'm just saying that quickly we go in there and we're able to make that kind of change. Uh, it's really quite remarkable. I'm going to delete that hue saturation layer because it's not really what we're here for, but I'm just giving you another example uh, of what you could use these luminosity masks for. Now, we've gotten the highlights. What about the shadows? Uh, well, we can do the same thing. Command or Control click on the thumbnail for the RGB composite channel, and this time inverse the selection. So select inverse, and now we've got the shadow is selected. Create a new channel, Command or Control I, voila. Now we want to subtract the selection here. Uh, again, you can think about it the complicated way or just say Command Option or Control Alt and click the RGB. And there we go. We've uh, locked in or constrained, contracted our shadows in even more. I'm going to do it again. And I'll create, I don't know, four or five levels of this as well. Voila. Let's do it one more time. And you can see, even at this rate, it's pretty fast for getting such a complex selection. But definitely still, the action is, it's just faster. And then Command or Control D to deselect. And you can see what we've got. It's just, uh, it's just a crazy amount of detail, right? His helmet's white. So his helmet, therefore, is in a highlight. And look at his helmet. Perfectly selected and turned black. Because if we're trying to apply something to the darker areas of the image, we don't want to apply them to the bright white helmet. Because that is, in this scene, a little tiny highlight there in the foreground. So it's just really, really amazing. It's a whole bunch of fun. Uh, and you can do a lot with these. We haven't even get, gotten started with that. I'm going to quickly select all these uh, channels. And I'm going to delete them. Because if you watch, we can take all these channels, delete them very quickly, but just watch the file size down here, right? I bet you it's going to go back to, well, it's going to go back to, I guess, right where we started because we're getting rid of all this. This has added almost a gigabyte of information. So what that tells you is use your luminosity masks and when you're done with them, throw them out because they take up a lot of file space. See that we're back to 172 megs, much more reasonable. 
Uh, all right, here's the action. So we just go window actions. I've got that luminosity masks. I hit play and voila, we're going to have four highlight and four shadow luminosity masks for any image you bring into Photoshop that easily. You can see how fast it is. We've got all of our masks. Great. So how do we use these now that we are whatever, 10 minutes into this video? How do we actually use these for this image? Well, first and foremost, I hope you are beginning to understand how these work. Here's how we use them. We're going to create three versions of our Golden Gate image. I'm going to drag my channels over here and I'm going to drag my layers out. I want to, and this goes back to remember way back when we opened up the camera raw file, we opened it as a smart object. We want to right click and choose new smart object via copy. We don't just want to hit command or control J. We want a totally fresh smart object and we want two of them. So we can call this uh, like H for highs. And this one's going to be golden gate L for lows or something. So we're going to attack the lows in this and the highs in this. We want to make the brights in this image, maybe not quite so bright. So double click on the thumbnail to open up camera raw editor for this layer and just reduce exposure a little bit. Maybe reduce the highlights a little bit. And I know what you're thinking. Like, why do we even need the luminosity masks? The highlight and shadow and white and black sliders are, they're pretty effective, aren't they? And they are, but you're still going to get some haloing and some crazy stuff like that from them. I still find that luminosity masks, it just delivers the best, the smoothest, and the most beautiful result. Maybe I'll even pump a little vibra uh, vibration, vibrance there into the, uh, into the sky. And there we go. We have this darker version of the image. You could do something as simple as just like set it to the multiply blend mode, right? And get a darker version of the image. That's what I'm trying to say. Maybe you've bracketed your shots. You actually have other photos that are darker right out of the camera. Uh, whatever you may have. I'm going to command or control click maybe alpha one here. Get that. And then hit the new mask icon. And voila, we have masked the darker effect there to the sky, and it just works perfectly. Let's do the same thing here with a Golden Gate L. Double click to open it up in Camera Raw. And now I'm just gonna focus on the foreground. I don't even care what I'm about to do does to the sky. So I'm gonna boost exposure maybe a little bit. I'm gonna boost the shadows up quite a bit. I'm gonna boost blacks a bit. I'm gonna boost clarity up to like plus 20, 30, something like that. I'm gonna boost vibrance up plus 20, 30, something like that. Uh, and I might even make the foreground a little bit warmer and a little bit greener than the rest of the image. Something like that. That is probably about what I want. Maybe I'll add a little bit of contrast, something like so, and hit OK. We don't have to be exact. We're gonna, you know, we'll push and pull it a little bit. And then what I want is something that highlights the shadowy parts of the image. So maybe I'll go alpha six here. It's got the sky really dark, so we're not gonna be applying much of this effect to the sky. Command or control click the alpha six channel and apply a layer mask and voila, just like that, we have began to sort of flatten the image out, right? So we have all this contrast in this initial image. And then here we just bring back so much detail in the sky and the foreground. And because we've done all that, we probably do want to begin reintroducing some contrast. So we'll do that, but I primarily want the contrast to be in the foreground. So, and, and the foreground in our case is predominantly dark. So I would go back to my channels. Maybe I'll bring my channels out here. I know I'm moving around a lot here, like a frenetic, crazy person. Uh, I'm going to select alpha six again, command or control, click that. And then I'm going to add a levels adjustment layer. And it's going to take that luminosity mask and apply it as the layer mask for our levels adjustment here. And here I'm going to say, all right, let's make this brighter and let's just add a lot more contrast there primarily to the foreground and I know that looks terrible but because it's an adjustment layer we have the beauty of the opacity slider and maybe I'll knock this down to about 35% opacity so we just add a little bit of contrast and, and even a little more brightening into the foreground portion of our image okay let's talk a little about color grading and continuing to build out the contrast uh, let's go let's start uh, kick things off with just a quick color lookup we'll do a drop blues LUT which as you would imagine is going to drop a lot of the blue out of this image uh, but let's immediately add both color and contrast using a uh, color balance adjustment layer. I don't know why that, that left me for a second. I wanted to primarily focus on the sky and be a little bit in my foreground. I'm mixing things up here. So I'm going to load alpha one as well, because we'll get a little bit here in the foreground from this, but mainly the color is going to be dropping into the sky. And we're going to make an adjustment to this mask. You're going to see just how versatile all this stuff is. And we're going to go ahead and apply color balance. There we have it. If I alter option, click on the mask, you can see not a lot's going to get through the darker part of the mask. I'm going to select my color balance layer and let's just say here in the midtones we want to add more red, add a little magenta, maybe add some yellow, and then we go over to shadows and we'll say, hey, look, give me a little bit of blue in the shadow, a little bit of magenta. Do I want red? Yeah, we'll go with a little red in the shadows. And then the highlights, we're gonna bump a little yellow in there, just a little bit of magenta. And then I think red, yeah, to add an overall like pinky look to it. Now, there's not quite enough of this color getting through to the foreground. 
right? So yeah, we could come down here. We could say like, all right, well then give me uh, give me alpha eight and let's just select this mask and fill it with white. And we could do that, right? We could just say, uh, well, set white as our foreground color and hit option delete. That's alt backspace and hit commander control D. And you can see now we've got a real crazy looking mask going on. And there's before and after we've done this pink change. We could do that. That's actually not too bad. It's an interesting little uh, way to go about things. But we could also just alter option, click on the mask and we could go adjustments levels. We're applying a levels adjustment to just the mask of this other adjustment layer. And here I can say, look, take the blacks and just make the blacks a little less black, make them a little more see-through. So preserve all those levels of tone, right? Like the darker wrinkles in the tree are still gonna be super dark compared to like the highlight on the tree, but just make everything a bit brighter. And oh, by the way, while we're at it, let's make the lights in the image a little bit lighter. So up there in the sky, we're really getting the full dose of the color balance. And you can see there's before and after. So we're mainly getting reds and pinks up in the sky in the highlights, right? Along the side of this tree, again, the sun is coming from the west to the left of this image. So the side of that tree is being lit up with that sunlight real nice. And the shadows are just getting a nice kiss as that light falls off over this whole area as well. And again, because it's an adjustment layer, we may want to just reduce the opacity a little bit. We take it down 80, 85%, and that's not too bad. Let's take it a step further here. Let's add in a little bit of the contrast that we began with. So again, going back to the image we started with, huge contrast, right? Sky very bright, foreground very dark. You know, the difference between the highlight on the front of the car, between the shadow side of the, the side of the car, just big contrast in this. So let's duplicate this layer, Commander Control J, and then we're just gonna drag this layer all the way up to the top, there we go. And I'm gonna turn all these layers back on. I don't know why I shut them all off. I think I shut them off, but didn't turn them back on. And then I'm gonna right click and just rasterize this layer. And we can just call this contrast or something like that. Now, the way that we can preserve all the color and a lot of the work we've done and still get some contrast is by just setting this to the luminosity blend mode, where what it's gonna do is just take the brightness values of this image or this uh, layer and bring them right through. In fact, I may just for good measure desaturate it just, just so in the back of my mind, I know nothing funky is going on, nothing is, but yeah, you know, sometimes again, it's it's a little OCD that we've got happening. Uh, now, this would be something I would probably want to apply to the midtones. Now, you can create midtone luminosity masks as well. We'll save that for a slightly more advanced version of this tutorial. Uh, just for today, this is more of an introductory, a long introduction, but an introductory, uh, just getting you into using some luminosity masks in general. But we can combine some of these luminosity masks uh, to give us some interesting effects as well. So we can say like, all right, I want to add contrast back to like a, a little bit of the sky. So I can like command or control click alpha three, see it loaded a really tiny selection, but there's lots of selections selected everywhere. And then and, you know, kind of uh, only a little bit of the foreground as well. So I can command shift and select alpha eight as well. So we've actually selected both alpha three and alpha eight. And now we can create a layer mask with this by hitting add a layer mask. And you can see there's before and after. So we add that contrast just to those specific areas. You can see it's a very funky looking mask that we've got. Looks kind of like a, a, a negative uh, slide or something like that. And then just reduce the opacity again, just to tone that off a little bit or just to cool it off a little bit and pull back while still adding some contrast there and contrast that is true to the original image we shot. So let's do a little bit of like an overall, um, I just wanna kind of add some boom to the foreground here with clarity and dehazing. So let's merge everything to a new layer, Command Shift Option E, and you would probably convert this to a smart object. I'm not gonna do that because this is just for the tutorial, but if you want like future editability and you wanna do it the smart way and the non-destructive way, you wanna do that. Uh, like I said, I'm just being lazy. I'm gonna boost the clarity a lot. So I'm going to push it up to like 60. I'm also going to push the haze up maybe about 10. I'm going to push vibrance up a bit and I may push exposure and eh, maybe uh, exposure a tiny bit, but a lot, a lot for highlights, highlights and whites. We really want to make the absolute highlights in the foreground pop here. And then I'm going to hit okay. So we we just did a lot of damage to the image. It doesn't look very good, but we just want like some of this stuff from the foreground and even the tree to be applied here. So again, this is where this kind of tonal stuff is super useful. We can just say, we just really want it in some parts of the shadow. So we're gonna to go to our most contracted, constricted, foreground shadowy mask, right? So all this stuff that's white, 
and gray, that's where the effect is going to go. And the, the areas of black in there, you see that down in alpha eight, the areas of black, it's just not going to allow any of this crazy camera roll effect to show through. So we apply this, you see the sky comes back to being pretty normal and our foreground just gets this overall just punchy boost. I mean, just for instance, watch the side of the tree here, watch all the highlights right here in the side of the tree when I turn this on, look at that. It just targets those highlights. And again, you can reduce the opacity a little bit if there's areas that bug you. Now, of course, you're gonna be zooming in and you're gonna be really taking a close look at your image and just making sure you're not messing anything up or leaving really flat, dark gray areas. His helmet, maybe I would go in there and manually add a little bit of brightness or contrast to, but maybe not. Maybe that's just what works for the image. I don't know. I'm just being picky because I love bike helmets. But the last thing I would probably do is just, uh, this one doesn't even involve the luminosity mask. Just throw a little uh, warming photo filter over this, set it to like soft light, and then just crank that opacity way down. I'm talking like seven, eight, nine percent opacity. Just something that just adds a little depth and warmth uh, to the overall uh, image. So there you can see, we go from an image straight out of camera that looks like that, that has a ton of contrast and the color isn't quite where we want it to be and just some things like that. And we add all of this to it. Now, there may be some areas where the light on the bridge is a little too flat for your taste. You can go in, you can make those adjustments, and you can make really hyper-targeted adjustments thanks to those luminosity masks. Again, make sure you go ahead and download the action. It's just going to be this luminosity mask action. Uh, you're going to be able to use it on any image you bring into Photoshop. So that's going to be it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you know a thing or two now about luminosity masks. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. That's a little bit about the luminosity mask. I hope you enjoyed it. See, we did get through it again. Uh, and if you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn the notification bell on so you get a little notification every time a new video comes out. Uh, and uh, check out this video that's appearing on screen right now. It's all about how to do composites and blend the color and light and tone and contrast, saturation, all that good stuff from scene to scene and help you get better composites in Photoshop right here, right now, today, absolutely for free. You can use that link right there on the screen and check it out. Thank you so much for watching this video all the way until the end. Ladies and gentlemen, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. NathanielDodson.vid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.